everyone. I'm Lisa Jones from the West Virginia University Extension Service Small Farm Center, and I make videos on increasing your farm success, whether you're just getting started selling locally, maybe at a farmer's market, or you are increasing your business efficiencies. I'm here to guide you on your sustainable agriculture journey by putting knowledge to work. And today I will be discussing startup decisions to benefit your farm taxes. So this guide is directed at West Virginia farmers, but in general, this information should be considered by all startup farmers. As a new farmer, you need to think of yourself as a business owner, which means you need to know your federal tax responsibilities. Tax evasion is always a bad idea, not to mention illegal, but there are ways to reduce your taxable income, in turn legally paying less for taxes. And here is a guide from the IRS for new businesses on questions to ask yourself as a new business owner. I'll link this chart in the description box below so you can follow up with some of these questions later. In addition to knowing about federal taxes and asking yourself the questions from the IRS guide, you'll also want to make some basic business decisions. So it takes your time to ask yourself, what are your financial resources? What are the products and services you'll be selling? How will I be marketing my products and services? How will I develop a strategic business plan? How will I manage my business on the day to day? And how will I recruit employees? And if these questions feel overwhelming at first, take them one at a time. And if there are certain topics you wanna to hear more about, please let me know in the comment section below and I'd be happy to make some additional videos for you. So as a farm, there are a few things you will want to complete as soon as possible. So decide on a farm name and register your business through the Secretary of State Office. To decide on the name, the Secretary of State Office does keep a listing of business names that are already taken. However, it is important to note that not all names may be listed if the person registered as a sole proprietorship. And I will link the website below in the description box for the office. The office has an online portal, which I highly recommend you use. And you can also print out and mail the forms. But if you use the online portal, then your information will automatically go to both the Secretary of State Office and the West Virginia State Tax Department. If you choose the postal mail option, then you will need to fill out separate forms and mail them to the different offices. So when you register as a business, you will need to choose your entity type, which determines your business structure. I encourage you to think about this decision in advance and not too hastily. So this is a legal decision for your business that has tax implications for your future, how you transition your farm to another person, and it also determines your legal protections. So you really should talk to a legal consultant about what the best type of entity is for your planned future. A sole proprietorship is the default option on the Secretary of State website, but you should look into a limited liability corporation company, also called an LLC, or maybe even an S-Corp. So different business types provide you with a different protections. So if someone tries to sue you, then they'd have to sue your business, which can protect your personal assets like your home. And you can decide to change your business structure in the future if you wish. If you start out, say, as a sole proprietorship and want to switch to an LLC, but there is extra paperwork to make that change through each office, so it's best to speak with a legal professional in advance and make the choice just once. A few notes for your business registration. If you are of age 29 or under and a West Virginia resident, then you will qualify for the Young Entrepreneurs Act, which waives your registration fee through the Secretary of State Office. So the $100 fee to register as an LLC would be waived, which would make it an amazing option if you qualify. However, you do still have to pay fees through the state tax department. If you're a veteran registering a business in West Virginia, then your fee is also waived through the Secretary of State Office and the first four years of annual report filing fees are also waived. So all you need to do is submit a copy of your DD-214 as proof to qualify. 
And if you do not fall under either of these designations, and then you will still have a $30 registration fee waived as an agricultural entity if you do choose a sole proprietorship option. And you will have a fee through the West Virginia Tax Department, but it's a one-time fee. So if you plan on having employees, then when you go through the online registration form, it will send your information to Workforce West Virginia, which will follow up with you later about workers' compensation and other questions that you might have for employees. If you submit your information to the Secretary of State and West Virginia State Tax Department, the next you will want to get an employer identification number or an EIN with the IRS. You can do this online and I will add a link in the description box below. After you receive your paperwork and the Secretary of State and West Virginia Tax Department check with your farm supply store to see if they have any forms that you need to fill out to get your sales tax exemption. In general, tangible personal property and taxable services with, that are connected with your farm business are exempt from this sales use tax. And sales tax exemptions apply to feed, seed, fertilizer, repairs to your tractor, etc. However, the purchase of or construction of permanent improvements or on real property and purchases of gasoline or special fuel are not exempt. So for example, if you purchase building materials or construct a barn, those are taxable. However, if you're purchasing nails and fencing, those are not considered permanent improvements, and so they are non-taxable. So using your sales tax for as many purchases as possible will save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars annually. And you'll want to fill out a farm use evaluation form with your county's assessor's office by September 1st annually to reduce your property tax burden. This particular form is helpful for the state to also track changes with farms across the state, and it's reported through the annual bulletin, which comes out of our National Agricultural Statistics Service Office. And that is information that our small farm center uses annually, so please submit it. So you'll want to ch open a checking account for your farm business to keep it separate from your personal account. And that, if you wanna stay with the same bank, you can easily do transfers online. But this is also a really good time to take advantage of sign-up bonuses through a new bank. Some banks will offer hundreds of dollars for opening an account with them. So look around and decide what is best for you and your business. Having a separate business account makes it easier not to spend money on personal items like a washing machine for your house. This will also help you deduct appropriate startup costs for your business and stay legal. And you want to do this as early as possible to take advantage of every business related expense. These costs may include advertising, customer surveys, equipment, professional fees. The IRS will allow you to deduct up to $5,000 in business startup costs in your first year of business that you launch if your costs are $50,000 or less. Beyond the $50,000, your deduction is reduced by the dollar amount up to $55,000 and then it's eliminated. So start tracking what you need for your startup because the timing for this deduction is very important. The separation of accounts will help you record with your record keeping, which should help you pair a financial system that works for you, whether it's electronic like Quicken, Peachtree, QuickBooks, or any of those products under Intuit, or the University of Maine Extension has a free farm account book resource that I will link below. Or if you choose a paper system like a three ring binder and some manila envelopes, that's perfectly fine too. Just pick something that is easy for you to use and to stay up to date. When do you start prepping for taxes? Well, the correct answer is last year. But if you're starting a new business, then you want to start completing an annual Schedule F Form 1040 for your next tax filing. It's important to start completing the Schedule F as soon as you start farming as certain grant, loan, and cost share programs that you might be eligible for may require at least three years worth of these records. So start early. And if you are just starting a farm business, then you may want to do your own taxes as you would as an individual. 
However, depending on how complex your situation is, especially as a new business owner, you should strongly consider hiring a professional. Using free online software is not the same as speaking with an accountant to ask those hard questions. So ask your friends, interview a few people, and choose an experienced tax preparer to take advantage of every tax deduction available to your farm business. So if these steps sound intimidating up front, you can connect with our WVU Extension Service and I would encourage you to enroll in the Annie's Project Program. The six-week business planning course is designed to strengthen your role in the modern farm enterprise and it will walk you through some record keeping, financial statements, creating a business plan, and other startup decisions. So if you found this content useful, please give it a big thumbs up below. And if you're looking for more videos that will make your farm business more efficient and profitable, please be sure to subscribe to our content and select that notification bell to get an update on future videos. And in the extension service, we thrive on good feedback. So drop your questions below in the comment section so I know what videos to make next. And it will let me know if you like this video. So until next time, happy farming. Toodles. Thank you.